Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rania Das, and first of all, I want to start off by thanking this day for and the Institute Library for organizing this whole program, and for my mentor, Ms. Kelly Brown, for guiding me through this whole process over the past five to six months. So, round of applause for them. So, today, my project focuses on how we can use arts-based intervention programs to reduce recidivism rates in this country. And I know that sounds like a lot, but I'll break it down. So this past December, I traveled to India. I'm Indian American, so a lot of my relatives live in India. And I travel there every year, every other year. So this time, I went to Calcutta, where my family lives. And I got to meet with a woman, Miss Avogadro and Miss Roy does a lot of things. She is a trained Indian classical dancer. She, in her day, was a Miss India finalist. She's a lot of things. But what she's most well known for is her work in the Calcutta prison system. And what she does is something that she calls love therapy. It's essentially a form of dance therapy. But she calls it love therapy because over the years, she's formed such a great connection with the inmates, the students that she's taught dance to. She considers them a family. So Miss Roy really, she began this love therapy years ago. She decided, I'm gonna go into the prison system and teach these inmates classical dance, Indian classical dance. And especially in a country like India where the caste system doesn't technically exist, but Classism is still quite rampant, and there's a lot of stigma surrounding incarcerated individuals. Everyone thought this was a preposterous idea, but she didn't think about it that way. She, and you'll see this in the film later on, that she believes that no one is born a criminal, no one is born inherently evil, and what she saw in these people is a youthful, energetic spark that was lost upon their incarceration, and she wanted to reignite that spark. So she began by teaching the male inmates martial arts based dances because they weren't initially that receptive to the idea of dance, Indian classical dance. They thought it was a bit more feminine. <laughs> um, but gradually she transitioned into more classical Indian dance styles and folk dances. And eventually she got them to put on their first public performance. And I'll get back to why the idea of a public performance is so important. By the end of that performance, everyone gave them a standing ovation, and they all broke down crying, the performers, because for the first time, they felt human, right? They felt recognized for something other than their record, what was on paper, that you have committed this crime, and that's how I'm going to think of you for the rest of my life. They felt recognized for something other than that. So the idea of a public performance is really important because the story believes that it really humanizes the individual who participates in the performance. And I think that's such a beautiful idea. And I will say that not a single one of her students has relapsed into a life of crime since their release from prison. I think that deserves a round of applause. So today, this film is going to explore how we can implement a similar sort of system of arts-based therapy to reduce recidiv re sorry, recidivism rates within this country. Because I do think that there is a strong connection between mental health and recidivism. When you address the psychological trauma associated with a crime, when you begin to heal, you're less likely to reoffend. So that's what I hope to convey in this film. Enjoy. Oh, I can just say it. Uh, I go to Hopkins and I'm a refugee. The United States has the highest rate of incarceration in the world. 
As of 2021, 664 out of every 100,000 people in the United States are incarcerated in some form, whether it be in juvenile detention, state or federal prisons, or even under community supervision. In a 2016 study conducted by the Sentencing Project, it was estimated that the U.S. keeps approximately 7 million men and women under criminal justice supervision, with 2.3 million behind bars, and some 4.7 million under probation or parole. It should be noted that minority groups are disproportionately affected by the U.S. justice system, with Black Americans being incarcerated at five times the rate of White Americans, and Latinx and Native American individuals at 4.2 and 2.4 times the rate, respectively. These statistics underscore the rampant racial injustice that still exists today within the American prison system. Comparatively, the state of Connecticut boasts a much lower incarceration rate of 394 out of every 100,000 people. As of 2021, there are 11,000 people in prisons across the state of Connecticut. Six Connecticut cities account for over 50% of the state's incarcerated population, namely Hartford, New Britain, Waterbury, New London, Bridgeport, and New Haven. It is predicted that by 2025, the state's correctional population will increase by 2%. Despite having a lower incarceration than most U.S. states, these numbers are still much higher than in NATO countries, reflecting flaws within the American justice system as a whole. I think oftentimes the issues that we have both in the system and after the folks have uh, left the system have something to do with the fact that we think about them as numbers, uh, we think about them as criminals, uh, we think about them as everything except for the human beings they are, and we treat them accordingly uh, with that thought. And uh, folks coming back into our system recidivating, uh, folks coming back into our system uh, unable to connect to uh, their communities and their families have a lot to do with the way that we have imagined and treated them. Perhaps more concerning than these statistics, however, are the rapidly rising recidivism rates. Recidivism is defined as the tendency of formerly incarcerated individuals to reoffend. A recent study conducted by the Connecticut Office of Policy and Management, or OPM, shows that within five years of their arrest and among a cohort of 14,398 offenders, 79% were rearrested, 69% were convicted of a new crime, and 50% were rearrested with a new sentence. Nationwide, similar trends arise. A study conducted by the Department of Justice showed that among 24 states, 82% of people released from state prisons were rearrested at least once during the 10 year period following their release from prison. Within the first year, 43% of formerly incarcerated individuals were rearrested. But why are recidivism rates so high? Many suggest that the pipeline between homeless shelters and prisons is a major contributing factor. The criminalization of homelessness has prevented many people from achieving a smooth re-entry into society. The formation of a criminal record as well as incarceration debt prevents many people from obtaining adequate jobs and housing. However, another overlooked factor is that of mental health. The, the world is going to look at that and say, on your record I see this stuff. That's who you are. No matter what you want to do, no matter how changed you are, you are. You are Sorry, yeah. Okay, yeah, it goes. It's fine. You can see this, this is really interesting. <coughs> All of it is. So we, 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 we've covered a lot of area here. Um, and I'd like to. I'm not going to go Are you happy to close me? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 